this new series, we're going to cover how to assemble a Graham non-supercharged engine. This is the engine produced from 1938 to 1940 in unsupercharged form. We're going to show you the differences between the unsupercharged engine and the supercharged so you can immediately recognize an unsupercharged engine. It is going to be pretty much a step-by-step -step process. It'll take more than one video. Sometimes we'll tell you to go look at something in a supercharged video rather than cover it again, but this is an effort to give you the chance to understand how to do the non-supercharged engine versus the supercharged engine. Stay tuned for the series. Here's how to instantly tell if you're looking at a non-supercharged block when the rest of the engine isn't around or if you're not really familiar. This is your oil fill point on a non-supercharged Graham engine. And here is where your supercharger would go. But you'll notice there's no studs, no way to fasten it here. And this particular hole has a plug screwed into it. That tells you this is a non-supercharged Graham engine. Here we have our non-supercharged engines we've just shown you on the other side mounted on our rotating engine stand right here. We can rotate 360 degrees if you really want to know more about the engine stand what we did to make it this way. That's going to be available in video probably your upper right hand corner Trish will put it in. You'll be able to watch part of our supercharged engine series that will show you how that was done and why it's important. What we're going to show you now is on the unsupercharged engine, we're on the passenger side, valve cover side, and we're putting the studs back in. These are 3 8 inch diameter studs. We put them in with a stud driver installer set that we picked up at O'Reilly. Anybody can pick up one there, 35 to 50 range. And you just install these along the side so that they are going to be snug when you put them in key point, this stud right here is shorter. So we'll put in the short stud and we'll show you the difference between a short and long stud now. Alright, there are your short and long studs. So the short stud's about a half inch shorter. Goes right here. Just put them in by hand. Start with a longer stud here. Now what we're going to do is we'll tighten those two down with our stud installer. Here's our stud installer. All you got to do is do this. Nice pull. You're good. This is not something where I'm going to say get a torque setting. They're not going to come undone if you bring them in like I did. And let them seat like that. Those are installed. I'm going to install the rest of them off camera. Here we are again on the valve cover side of the engine. You see there are one, two, three, four holes. Those four holes are for drive nails. This will be where the engine data plate is going to go eventually. However, you see we have a drilled and threaded hole here. That's behind the data plate. So we're going to have to put a hole plug in here. And we want to make sure it's not going to leak. So we're going to have to use a sealant on it. Here we have our hole plug. I put a sealant on it. The correct sealant you want is right stuff. Don't use standard silicone. Use right stuff for this. This will take about 90 minutes to harden up where it could be in service. We're obviously going to be a lot longer than that because we're building this engine. You want to screw this in until it's just below the surface of the block so that when we put our engine data plate on there it won't have a little bow out at that point. Now this I'm going to wipe off with a paper towel and we're done with that little step. Here we are back on the driver's side of the engine. We're going to install our oil dipstick extension. It goes right in here. We've already pre-painted it new Ford gray. 
That happens to be the closest match for gray used by Graham at the time. Because the engines that I've seen at the time were gray. You get the Hollywood engines, some of them were black. Some of the engines in 40 range were also a sickly green color, which Milton Nichols says he thinks is basically they dumped all the paint colors together at the end of the day and use that to spray the engine blocks with. Now I'm going to have to tighten this up more than with hand tight. I'm going to get a piece of rubber and a pliers and squeeze it and go around so I don't gym up this particular piece any more than people have done in the past. Using a piece of sponge rubber here, I'm going to grab on to my part and tighten it up a bit more. Simple way to do this. That seems good. Nice and tight. Now because as I said it's new Ford Gray, when we get everything put together to a certain point we'll spray the entire engine with new Ford Gray. If this hadn't been on the back side of this it would be very hard to paint. This is going to be fairly hard over here. What you're looking at here is the top of the engine and we have all the valves done here. My friend Rich Eckert did the valve job, did an absolutely beautiful job. And you can see that he's numbered the valves starting at the front one and 12 obviously being at the back because each valve is set up for its guide to be exactly the right amount of clearance. So we're going to keep those in order. What you're looking at here is the underside of the engine. What we're going to do is we're going to start inserting all the way along here our valve lifters so we can do our valve installation. Now remember I told you all the valves were numbered. I've taken those out, set them over on the workbench for right now. But we're going to start putting the lifters in and we're going to use our special assembly lube. I'll put on the screen the mixture of assembly lube so that you can see what we use. But we're going to coat each valve lifter with assembly lube before we drop it into their holes. All right, here's the first lifter. Completely coated it with assembly lube. All you got to do is drop them down into the holes and go through and do all 12 of them.